What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with part two of our start to finish SketchUp model to Lumion workflow. So in part one, we brought our model in and we started working with our textures and materials. Um, in this video, we're gonna continue through with that and go all the way through exporting. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna replace these two materials with their own version of this polygon metal panel material. So we'll just come in and do the same thing, but in this case, we'll bring in the color map from the polygon.com material. So that's basically the material that's getting placed on here, and you can see how that's getting placed on this face. And we'll just kind of match it up so that its settings line up with this other one. So we'll also load that same normal map in here. And you can see how these line up really well, but in this case what you want is you want your metal panels to be kind of rotated. So what we'd do in that case is we'd go down and we'd adjust our orientation. So you don't necessarily want the heading, but you can adjust the pitch. And also the bank. So you can adjust the way that that's rotated so that this maps out okay with an within this face because what you want is you want this to look like it's a metal panel that you were able to place here what you want this to look like is you want this to look like a continuous metal panel that runs along this face and so you can just kind of play around with it in order to get the look that you want so you can adjust this up and down a little bit because in this case what i want is i want this to run I want this to be big enough that the joints are only showing this way, not this way. And so now if I zoom out, you can see how this now looks like kind of a continuous panel. And you might, you probably need to adjust the scale of the other panel material as well, just so everything lines up properly. So you can see how there's a lot of just fine adjustment that goes on with this kind of thing. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's so hard to create like a real good rendering tutorial is because there's just so many things that I'm just adjusting until they look the way that I want them to look. You can see how I'm adjusting this up and down. So you have to be able to kind of make your own judgments on how you want your materials to look. So I apologize in advance. I'm trying to talk through this as much as I can, but really you're just going through and you're just adjusting things until they look good is all that you're doing. So you can see how I'm kind of jumping back and forth between the different materials to kind of see what the settings look like. So, and then for some of these others, I'm just coming in here and I'm just selecting like a painted metal type material. So just, I'm, I'm using the presets in here to, pro, to apply a metal type material to this. And you can see how you can come in here and you can actually adjust things like coloring and other things as well. So I'm going to replace this wood material with, I'll find a, maybe this material right here. And then I'll rotate the pitch on that 90 degrees. And then maybe apply a different outdoor brick or stone material. And you can see how I'm just adjusting the X and Y offset on this to make things kind of match up. And it's not exactly perfect, but I think we'll go with it for right now. So and then the one other thing I'm going to do, and I'm not going to do a whole lot of this at this point, but I'm going to bring in just a little bit of landscaping material just to make things look a little bit more realistic. So in this case, I'm going to bring in some leaves, kind of a small pile and just place them on this face right here. Um, just something that breaks this up a little bit more. If we were going to get more in depth, probably what I would do in this case is I would bring in furniture, maybe some like patio furniture or something like that. But for now, I think we've got kind of a good start. So let's go ahead and go to exporting our image. And so to export our image, we're just going to go up to photo. And if you remember, we saved our photorealistic setting from before. So we're going to bring that in. So I'm going to do a file, 
load effects. And we're just going to bring in our render shadow effect from the previous tutorial. So you can see how that kind of sets our materials up. That sets our grass up and everything else. And I'm just kind of fine adjusting this view. And what we can do is you can come in and you can adjust things like your sun height. So you can make the shadows kind of look the way that you want them to look. Um, so you can kind of create the look that you're going for there. You could adjust things like the trees and everything else as well. You can even get kind of a lens flare effect. That's probably going to be a little too bright. But you can see I'm just adjusting this to get kind of the look that I want using that preset that I had before. And then when I'm kind of happy with what I created, we're just going to go ahead and click render photo. We'll set it to desktop, so 1920 by 1080, and we'll let it render. So you can see how this creates a pretty realistic image using the trees in the background and the grass and everything else. So that's one thing that I really want to point out is don't try to recreate the wheel on everything that you're doing. If you need something to be placed in the middle of this field, use the default model, the example model that Lumion's provided for you to give you some of that. Or at least take a look at that and dive a little bit deeper into what makes that look so realistic. So, and we'll look at that a little more in, in depth in the future, but just kind of an idea of how you could quickly bring something in and get a pretty decent render without having to do a ton of work. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Hopefully this gives you an idea at least of the mindset that you need to have when you're creating something like this. It's just kind of a trial and error, finding a way to make things work, finding a way to get the result that you want. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.